with the shot. She play the flu with my wrist. Sis, I got the flu on her. I play it cool on her. Hit sticks. That's how I do it. What I'm gonna do in this gym. This was great. Flew out of ruin this gym. So they shot in the shot. Way in the hills. I'm high in the climate. Sick and drinking and sick and sipping. Paying for hills and running it down. Jewish lawyers on the phone call. I said I'm gonna sign a little bitch when I sign it. I got these Benjamin Frank on my body. Ain't finna fill up. Shit, 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 shit. Your bitch nigga 458. I pull up with my shit for 488. Pull up beside my bitch like, yo, what's the difference between my 458 and your 488? Just felt like 80 to 100,000, but that's how I hate it. Woo! Hey, body go stupid again. She out the roof of the bitch. I'm about to do it again. I'm gonna get a full of grace. Just made a flip out of the rock. Hell, Frank Mueller, I jump out the jeweler again. I put all my money up on the Rio, but I got it right back and I blew it again. <laughs> I'm with Molly G, bro, flying Holly Grove chicks to my Hollywood shows. And I wanna tell you something that you probably should know. This that slum dog millionaire Bollywood flow and uh my real friends never hear it from me. Fake friends write the wrong answers on the mirror for me. That's why I pick and choose. I don't get you confused. I got a small circle. I'm not with different crews. We walk the same path, but got on different shoes. Live in the same building, but we got different views. I got a couple cars I never get to use. Don't like my women single. I like my chicks in twos. And these days, all the girls are down the road. I hit the strip club and all the bitches find Plus I've been sipping so this shit is moving kinda slow Just tell my girl, I tell a friend that it's time to go Now tell me how you love me, you know you have the time for all the habits right above me Oh, it's your money, motherfucker, yeah, yeah, yeah Train. Yes, I'm in the building, you just on the list of guest names And all of my riders do not give up X Games Guns turn you boys into, 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 into sex change And I smoke till I got chest pains And you niggas know I rep my game like Jesse James Women are possessive and they wanna possess rain I've been fly so long I fell asleep on the poo plane Skinny pants and some vans Call me Triple A, get my advance in advance Amen, as the world spinning, dance in my hands Life is a beach, I'm just playing in the sand uh, Wake up and smell a You can't see me, but never overlook me I'm on the paper trail and ain't no telling where it took me Yeah, and I ain't the killer, but don't push me now tell me how you love me You know you have the time for all the habits right above me Oh, it's young money, motherfucker You yeah, ain't yeah. running with it, running from it, motherfucker All right, let somebody show some money in this Yeah.
dead. I slap my girl, she caught a face. I did that time and spent that bread. I'm in her I'm almost there. I'm on my way, headed up the stairs. To my surprise, a new replacing me. I had to take him to that ghetto universal. I'm in the lights, in the sky. Welcome to Swenson Pitch on the East Campus of Bridgewater State University for tonight's men's soccer MASCAC tournament quarterfinal matchup featuring the fifth seeded Owls of Westfield State University and your fourth seeded Bears of Bridgewater State University. Ladies and gentlemen, Bridgewater State University is a safe, respectful, and inclusive community. We welcome and respect freedom of speech in all forms of peaceful protest in support of social justice and racial equity. We are committed to providing and supporting, learning and growing together in a welcoming and inclusive environment. Let's meet tonight's starting lineups. First for the Owls of Westfield State. Starting in goal, a junior from Ludlow, Massachusetts, 0-0 Emilio Mancuso. On defense, a sophomore from Portmore, Jamaica, number three, Kivo Brown. In the midfield, a senior from Southwick, Massachusetts, number five, Matthew Allen. On defense, a sophomore from Springfield, Massachusetts, number eight, Matthew Almasian. At forward, a senior from Chicopee, Massachusetts, number nine, Jojo Evragai. On defense, a junior from Marlboro, Massachusetts, number 12, Jack Johnson. On defense, a senior from Holyoke, Massachusetts, number 14, Jacoby Othier. On defense, a sophomore from Chicopee, Massachusetts, number 15, Josh Waiteka. On defense, a junior from Belchertown, Massachusetts, number 18, Owen Rains. In the midfield, a freshman from East Hampton, Massachusetts, number 22, Carter Dadrill. And in the midfield, a freshman from Providence, Rhode Island, number 27, DeAndre Rodriguez. The head coach for the Owls is Christopher Streeter. He is currently in his first season. for your Bears of Bridgewater State University. Starting in goal, a senior from Sandwich, Massachusetts, number one, Will Russell. On defense, a senior from West Warren, Massachusetts, number two, Dan Rickson. On defense, a sophomore from Wilbraham, Massachusetts, number four, Jack O'Toole. On defense, a sophomore from North Attleboro, Massachusetts, number five, Justin Silva. At forward, a senior from Brockton, Massachusetts, number 10, Robson Montron. In the midfield, a sophomore from Southboro, Massachusetts, number 12, Karsten Bullows. On defense, a junior from New Bedford, Massachusetts, number 14, Jacob Ramos. 
In the midfield, a sophomore from Milford, Massachusetts, number 15, Nicholas Matias. In the midfield, a junior from Acushnet, Massachusetts, number 17, Ethan DeMello. At forward, a junior from East Bridgewater, Massachusetts, number 23, David Nelson. And on defense, a freshman from Rockland, Massachusetts, number 27, Gavin Norton. The head coach for the Bears is Brendan Adams in his 21st campaign. He is assisted by John Amaral and Victor DaCosta. Officials for today's contents are Jordan Cavaco, Corey Cloudier, and Thomas Layton Nolan. At this time, we ask that you please rise and remove your caps for the playing of our national anthem. NCAA, the Massachusetts State Collegiate Athletic Conference, and Bridgewater State University promote good sportsmanship by student athletes, coaches, and spectators. We request your cooperation by supporting the participants and officials in a positive manner. Profanity, racial, or sexist comments, and any other intimidating actions directed at officials, student athletes, coaches, or team representatives will not be tolerated in our grounds for removal from the site of competition. Also, consumption or possession of alcoholic beverages is prohibited. Well, the sun's not out here to bring them out. Bring them out. Bring them out. Bring them out. It's hard to yell when the bat rails in your mouth. Almost went this ball field for a second. The lights are on. Just goes in the front row. Everything is ready to go. Action packed night here at Swenson Pitch on the campus of Bridgewater State University. It's the Massachusetts State Collegiate Athletic Conference 2022 Men's Soccer Tournament quarterfinal. There's the four seed in this tournament receiving a visit from number five, West. State winner of this match moves on to play Birmingham State, the top seed this Friday. Well, this is going to be a, a good game between both Bridgewater State and West Hill, like you mentioned. And you know, I think both sides, you know, it's the first round of playoffs, so we could see some, some nerves here from, from both teams. And I think today that Westfield State is going to keep a special eye on David Nelson, who, you know, connected on four goals the last time they played. And, um, yeah, it's you can feel the energy, the atmosphere of this playoff mm -hmm. feel, and Swenson's ready to rock tonight. Ready to roll here at Swenson Pitch. Welcome to the Bears Sports Network. Wherever you're viewing from, I'm Matt Donahue. And I'm Olivia Jettick. This is just the second all-time playoff meeting between these two sides. The last time was in 2015. Bridgewater State won that two, two to nothing, but not before eight yellow cards. No, I'm not joking. Eight yellow cards shown the last time these two sides met in a playoff match. We'll see if it's just as chippy as 2015 and we're underway. Yeah, and like you mentioned, they've only this is actually their only second time meeting in the playoffs. And to think about how long this MASCAC tournament has been going on, which I believe it's the 22nd year, this tournament. 
you know, for the men's mm -hmm. soccer has been around. So it's just astonishing to see that number. But, you know, like I said, the last time these two teams met, it was a 4-2 win by the Bears. And like I mentioned before, it was the four goals by David Nelson who exploded. And, and right now, currently, for this Bears squad, he leads the team with goals with seven and an assist. So he has 15 points here leading the way for the Bears. So it'll be good to kind of see early on you know, that momentum that he's going to bring and see how Westfield, you know, responds to uh, those goals from the last time these two teams met. And I believe it was here. It was home. It was a nice home match here for the Bears. Very interesting to see also as the Owls try to maintain and carry it back over into their own territory for a moment to regroup. It's very interesting also to note that David Nelson, of course, a big offensive presence for this Bears side. A junior, someone with some experience with this set as the Bears go to regroup on their own end. Owl's trying to press the case. I'll get back to my point someday. On the corner, Allen. And nice deflected off. Nice play by Ramos to avoid that corner. You know, earlier on, you don't want to see these set plays, you know, give a, a team like Westfield, who's on the road for a playoff game, some momentum. So it's a nice heads-up play there by Jacob Ramos in the corner. Throw in easily disrupted. Ball I'll circle back to my point. It was yeah, I was, was going to say. I was, I was just thinking about, you know, David Nelson. He's a junior, certainly, you know, not the oldest player on this Bears side, but somebody with a fair amount of experience. But Westfield's points leader on this regular season it's just a freshman. It's Carter Hebert. Comes into this match with eight goals and three assists on the year. Really sort of one of the big offensive nuclei for this Owl side. And it'll be very very interesting to see how he performs as well as this match proceeds. And like you mentioned that for him, this is his first taste of MassCAC playoff you know, energy. It, it's a different environment out there when you're in a playoff game compared to, say, a regular season game. So... You know, we'll see how he kind of responds to kind of the pressure of being out there. I believe he's not out there right now. He's not. But, you know, seeing his worth and value to this team, I'm assuming we'll be seeing him very soon checking in here for the, the Owls. Throw in for the Owls was from Kivo Brown, the Jamaican, but played his high school ball in Connecticut. So far, the Bears are having a little bit of difficult time keeping... Seems like they're always fighting to keep the ball out of their end. Westfield's, you know, putting the pressure on here early. That's what they need, and it's going to be a throw in here. Conversely, if you're one of the two between the pipes for either the Owls or the Bears, this has been a very nice first couple minutes of this match. Not a whole lot of work to put in. Uh, for Bridgewater State, it's the senior William Russell, typically starting in net for the Bears. For the Owls, it's the junior from Ludlow, Emilio Mancuso, spends by just a narrow margin... Not, not even quite the bulk of the time. Very interesting to know. All three of their keepers are juniors, Mancuso among them. All three of them have spent relatively even time in net. You know, it varies. Mancuso, a goal allowed on average, he lets up a little over two per game, typically. He let up rather more than that the last time these two squads matched up, as you mentioned. David Nelson putting four in the back of the net. If we see here Russell kind of gets his first test of the night, but that shot was <laughs> very wide, so he's going to sit up here for the goal kick. He's going to swing it wide to that looks like Jack O'Toole, who's a very key part to this Bears defense. O'Toole with a leg, very good at facilitating. A run down and rolling out for it before any danger is Mancuso. That was a nice run out there by Dan Rickson, I believe. That was, yeah, number two, who uh, had a good jump on that ball, just had a a little bit too much on it. And, you know, this is what the Bears need. I mean, I, I had a conversation with actually the head coach, Coach Brendan Adams, and he said we got to use our speed to our advantage. And I agree. This this Bears team mm -hmm. has some solid defense, and they have a ton of speed. We were talking about this before the game, that if they can kind of use that to their advantage, I think they're going to have a successful night. Bears cough it up on the play. It looks like it's going to be Witeka with the throw in. No, I stand corrected. He yields. Both of these sides really giving each other, I, I mean, I know we're five minutes in, but they're both <laughs> giving each other some work, not really pressing the issue so much or not having a chance to do so on yeah. the offensive end as 
that Borokai tries to navigate with it. That one's got air, but it comes easily to Russell. Yeah, and both of these teams could, you know, be trying to feel each other out. It's early on in, in a playoff game. There might be some nerves for, mm -hmm. you know, these younger players on, on both squads that maybe haven't had a ton of experience. Or if it's, you know, any playoff game, you might have some nerves. So they could just be working through those right now. Bolos wrestles it away. Gets his own pocket pick. Then it comes back with speed to Dodrill. Dodrill poked away. We already start to see some of this aggressive play, especially in the midfield. Right there, I believe it was uh, DeMello for the Bears already being aggressive. And I think they do so well when they're aggressive in the middle and they can win the ball and then use their speed to the outside. So I think that's going to be a, a key here for the Bears. Speed, a big part of this offense. They simply catch you by surprise. Here comes DeMello trying to put one in long, but he's wide. It's a good chance, and, and I know we've talked about before some of these, Correction these Bears offensive players have this, you know, they can shoot it from long distance, so it looks like um, it was number 10 there. A correction, Entron. I was about to say, I, what I thought was a 1-7 was a 1-0. Yeah, you can see maybe he was <laughs> trying to catch, you know, Mancuso off, off guard there a little bit with the shot from wide, so good start here for both teams, maybe a little bit of nerves. It's going to send that goal kick very long past the logo. Bears are going to win that back. And Montrond is also a very tough customer on the offensive end. Somebody who is certainly keen to score or assist on at least one or two occasions Definitely. a match, if not more. He's somebody to keep an eye on as well. One of the more senior members of this side. A senior from Brockton. Definitely. And I think, you know, for their success, Nelson and Montron, they can be aggressive and be the key. You know, they don't have to score the goal, but be super mm -hmm. aggressive in you know, we know we've seen them score goals all season long. So if they can kind of be the front runner of, you know, pushing the ball up the field and being aggressive and taking shots, I think it's just going to help this Bears, this Bears squad. And you never know, maybe they can get some key contributions from others today. Rickson couldn't catch up in time. Back to midfield, headed. And here rolls Matias. Long shot up ahead, off the skull of Bolos. A dispute for it and keeping it <laughs> in really athletic play by Matthew Allen. That was definitely a wild play there. The ball's just kind of pinging around. So many players are touching the ball at once, and finally Matias has it. He's going to try to do a little give and go to Montron, who has it. Gets by his defender, but too many defenders when you're trying to dribble one-on-one, -on -one, trying to get into the box. No doubt Montron is at or near the top of Westfield's scouting report. Who not to leave alone. Bears are going to bide their time a little bit. Drop it back to O'Toole. Up ahead, case in point, the wheels rolling with it. That was some quick running by Norton, who is wont to do that, but the Bears cough it up on the play. Chasing it down. Dodrill. Up ahead, Ramos intercepts for the Bears. Nice clear there by Brown. That's going to be headed by O'Toole. Both of these sides struggling early to hang on to the ball for particularly long concerted stretches. Neither one, you know, a lot of early turnovers there. Nelson unable to proceed. Yeah, a lot of pinball action, as I like to call it, back mm -hmm. and forth. The ball's just kind of not really being settled right now. No team really has full possession. And I chalk know. it up to the defense for sure. They're really exactly. running each other ragged early. Just through the first nine or ten minutes of this match, Nothing, nothing between these sides. Remember, of course, this is for all the marbles. That one is wide anyway, but Russell comes out to collect. Ramos has time and some speed. He's going to keep carrying the ball. Now he's well past midfield. Still, no one's really put any effort. To c now there's a defender on him. He still has it. This one is for the chance to continue this year, as we mentioned at the top of the broadcast. Winner of this match goes on Friday to face the number one seed in the conference, Framingham State, in Framingham. Loser goes home. Definitely will be a tall task, but the Bears need to focus definitely, and they can hopefully pull this one out. Matias gives this one space, plenty of time for Mancuso to come out and collect. Mancuso's going to... Punt it away. 
He's got a strong leg to him. He can pretty. I think every goal kick so far and punt has gone way past the halfway point. Something for the Bears to be aware of. That's definitely going to be a penalty. Yep. No McNeese went flying. <laughs> I think he went vertical. Airborne for a second. Looks like that might have been Tamello who took the hit. He kind of went up in the air and just kind of flattened out. It <laughs> definitely was going to be a whistle there on that play. But nothing malicious. Just going for the ball. and so Happens in the course of things. Definitely. Big strip. A couple of those early from Carter Dodrill, and he pulls it away for the Owls. Up ahead, Rodriguez. Dangerous ball down the sideline now. Looks like he was trying to find a Borakai, but could not. He's going to be surrounded by at least three Bears <laughs> defenders on that one, so some good swarming defense, and we've kind of seen that all season. This Bears team does it by committee. It's not, you know, one singular defender that's always there making plays. They have a good, solid back with, you know, Ramos and Silva and mm -hmm. O'Toole and Rickson spent some time by there. Now he's going to be coming down the sideline. Rolling up is Rickson. He was looking across to someone. Trying to press the issue. High, and that one is through the uprights for Bolos. That would have been good for a football three points. That's not until Saturday, I'm yeah. You can catch it out here on the Bear Sports Network as well, but right now, no good. <laughs> Shots high, and Mancuso will post up for another goal kick. We've already beaten one interesting record that I found looking back at the, uh, the details. The last time these two squads matched up in a playoff game, again, that was in 2015. Eight yellow cards shown. First one came in the eighth minute. Just some aggressive so play right none of that yet. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, eight minutes into the game, you're already getting a yellow card. Some aggression there. It was chippy. None of that yet today. Now Westfield's going to kind of build out of the back here. They're going to kick it back to Mancuso to kind of restart things out of the back. He kind of doesn't really know what it looked like. He was kind of confused. They didn't really where, know where to go. Yeah, ni neither one of these offenses so far has had any particularly firm looking designs. They're definitely sort of figuring it out as they go trial and error in the early going here. Bears retain it in Westfield State Territory. Looks like they're trying to connect some passes together but yet again the Westfield defense forces it out of bounds but going to be a throw in here for the Bears on the far side. It'll be Nelson with the toss and those fire truck red cleats tough to miss him. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> DeMello across to Ramos. Ramos looking for an outlet. Watched closely by Allen. He'll drop back to DeMello. DeMello working around. Picked off again. Who else? Carter Dodrill. Across to Brown. Brown a boot. Deflection off of Rodriguez. And another pick off. This time Matias thought he had it. But coming away with it is a Barakai. A lot of turnovers early between these two sides. They're going to drop all the way back to Brown. Brown's going to look nice looping pass to the outside. Wants it to be Allen, but no luck. Brown actually sent it all the way out, ultimately. So there we just kind of see Allen's speed on the, on the outside, something for the Bears to now be aware of. And that was a really nice ball by Brown to him. It's going to be a Bridgewater free kick. Westfield was offsides on the play, actually. I thought it went out. It was really close to the line. Yeah, it was a close offsides call. The uh, officials with a keen eye on things, it was an offsides on Westfield. So Bridgewater out of the free, trying to keep as much continuity as they can. DeMello gives that one airtime up ahead to Nelson. Owl strip it away. With Tekka backwards. Rolling close along the side there. I'm and letting it roll out. I was going to say, I think our tool is waiting for that to roll out of bounds. Now they're down the Bears are going to turn it over in their end. It looks like we're going to have a few substitutions here. We're going to have a lot of substitutions. Yeah, actually, West more than a few. Westfield is selling half the farm on this substitution. We'll get you some names in just a second, but wowza. In and out, a little bit of a line <laughs> change here going for the, the Owls. I guess all of Westfield's teams do that. We were just talking about this before yeah, the broadcast, you and I, Olivia, about Westfield's women's basketball team in particular has a penchant for swapping out all five of their players at one go. Yes. Seems the soccer team is no different. Hebert, Brandt, Keeney, and Dennehy are all in for the Owls. They replace Evborakai, Johnson, Rodriguez, and Witeka, respectively, here in the early going. 
close but no cigar trying to recover his Montron, but he's going to be well high and wide. And like you mentioned before, Hebert, the freshman who's just entered this game, is someone to look out for mm -hmm. as he is leading this team with goals. So I'm sure that Bridgewater has put on, on high alerts, you know, where, where his whereabouts are on the field. And it's very rare to see, you know, a freshman <coughs> make a, you know, team leading contribution, but that will just show you how special he is as a player. So that's local, something to look out for. And a local as well. He's from, well, local to Westfield, I should say. He's from East Hampton. A lot of Western Mass guys on this owl side. No shock there. Bit of a collision there. Looks like that was between Silver and Ramos, but they were able to clear it. Now a ball lifted, trying to connect with David Nelson. That's going to be sent away wisely, as if Nelson got his foot on that, he would have been one-on-one -on -one with the goalie, so very nice play. Almasian with a huge deflection there. <coughs> Back inside, Allen's not even really going to try. And it just seems so far, and you know, every time Bridgewater you know, gets a good opportunity, Westfield's always there and, and ready to be physical. You can see kind of the physical nature starting mm -hmm. to pick up, and they've really kind of wiped away all their offensive opportunity, where we've seen more of this half shift more now. Bridgewater's getting all the opportunities. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see how this half plays out. Something tells me it'll have to do a lot with Kivo Brown with a lot of strips, and that one is high. That was a beautiful shot there by Matisse. Just a little bit over the crossbar, but can't complain about that shot. Just showing his strength from the outside. That was a little, I think that was... I don't know if you caught it, but right around the 30-yard line. So yeah. That was impressive, showing his, you know, like strength here early on. Three early shots for Bridgewater. Just one shot for Westfield so far in the match, but it was credited as a shot on goal. Well, Tool's going to clear that out. It's going to go... Out of bounds here. Westfield State's going to earn themselves a throw in. Didn't look like he got as much laterally on that as I thought it would. It ended up falling in front of the Bridgewater State bench. Just about 27 to play in the first half. And these two are just going to grind it out slowly. At least that's what the uh, first 18 minutes sure seem like. Yeah, this is definitely going to be a. Uh a closer game oh, than big the first kick. one. Bolos pulled it away and left it for Matias. Along the side, Norton. Airtime. Left easily for Reigns. And the Owls are back at the controls. Dropping back to facilitate. This might be the longest either team has kept a grip on it. Allen trying to chase it down. He will not. I think maybe on that play there, Allen was just a little too fast for his good. Basically ran the ball out of bounds, which is going to earn a goal kick here for Will Russell. He's going to send it away. He's Ramos just going to tap proud it proud of his teammates. contribution. Saw some clapping at the end. <laughs> Silva, the masked man. At least he once was. No, he still is. I see the glint off of his face. Yep. Yeah, he's got that, <laughs> that facial mask on. A nice heady play there by Norton to kind of shield that one out of bounds. It's going to earn the Bears another goal kick here. Paul Russell's going to get set to deliver that one. So, so far here, I believe we haven't seen any subs from the Bears. Just Nothing just yet. Just a no. line change from Westfield. Four new faces came in. O'Toole on the far side, looking to post the Bears deep in Owl territory. A header, that was an interesting setup. A little bit of a lazy dribbler from Othier over to Mancuso, who sprinted out for the, s for the stop. Definitely a dangerous <laughs> play there by Othier, but... Very nearly risked setting up. Somebody on the other end, either Nelson or potentially... Rickson as well. Trying to cash down there is Norton. He'll hit the deck. Out of bounds off of the Bears. 
Across save. Another easy little shot there. Easily controllable there by Will Russell makes another save. That was Keeney with the shot attempt. He's just going to roll it nice and gently out to Silva. Now Ramos has it. Both of these sides playing at a much more leisurely pace, which is not something you would think when you think a playoff game. But they are both leaning into the idea of controlling things and keeping things within their own reach. Ramos popping it back into Owl territory there. Brandt up ahead trying to navigate Hebert. O'Toole deflects a pass meant for Hebert. Montron trying to maintain, watched by Brandt. Hebert trying to put his foot back in the mix, but Montron slides it up. Montron's everywhere right now. Trying to defend three people. <laughs> Take the ball away. Dodge roll, but that one's lazy and wide. Easy work for Russell. No score yet. 23 and a half left in the match. Looks like the big bass drum is heading down there. This thing's going to feel like a real soccer match once you start yeah. the drums being beaten yeah, and chants flying around. I don't know who's going to be hitting that, but that was <laughs> Delaney Langton. Uh, she's a member of the women's soccer team. She uh, came in here and grabbed the drum, so we'll see what, what's going to happen with that. She's probably going to try to rally this, this men's team and give them some motivation or some celebration. If they're able to get a goal, they'll probably be hitting the drum, so we'll see what happens. Bears women's soccer will be playing a playoff match of their own here at Swenson Pitch this Friday evening. You'll be able to catch Delaney Langton and her crew here on the Bears Sports Network that night. Yeah, it should be a should be a good match. I know the women's seed I mean the women's team comes in as a two seed. So they are gonna have a lot of excitement and they're ready to go in their playoff run, just like we're seeing the men's squad here. Yeah, I said they're ch now they're trying to figure out where to put the drum here. It's a <laughs> very careful choice. You don't want it too close to everyone. Ramos, the free kick, and it's over pretty much everybody. Too far to be particularly efficacious. Deep in the Bears' territory, trying to make something happen. Rollo quickly as Heber, he gets deflected by Ramos. Big stop, Ramos! What a defensive play! Yeah, I mean, if, if check out Ramos isn't making that play, it's one-on-one -on -one with him and Will Russell, and I don't know, Will Russell is a very good goalkeeper, but that would have been a tough play for him to make, so excellent, excellent play. Lazy roller retrieved by Brown. Carter Hebert, the Owls' goals and points leader, is told no at the door by Jacob Ramos. And you could just see his why he leads his team in goals. He was made an excellent play there, but Jacob Ramos slammed the door shut on that one and said, no way, not on my field. So outstanding play by him. He wants to do it again, but not even close. Silva will chase it down first. Norton up ahead of speed. Demon across to Ramos, and he's going to drop all the way back. Russell will try to give it a little bit firmer of a boot. Headed by Dodrell. Back on the floor. And a very, very tall guy back there in Jacoby Othier. Maybe it's just my angle, but Jacoby Othier. Sure looks pretty tall. 6-1. He's definitely at the higher end of this owl side. Yeah, from this roster here, he's the tallest on this team. Montron puts it in the air. And out of bounds. Brandt. Nearly did brain surgery on Matias with that kick there. Nelson wants to close in. Watched closely by O'Brien. Correction, Almasian. We already see some aggressive play on, on this far side. A little bit of some energy. We'll just call it that, starting between these two squads. Eight yellow cards in 2015. Rivalry is still somewhere underneath. Throw in will be for Norton to Matias. 
He'll drop all the way back to Silva. DeMello. Halbin into the game, across to Ramos. Halbin and Gelfi came in as substitutions for Rickson and Montrond, respectively. Matias wants to set somebody up. He wants it to be Gelfi right into the arms of Mancuso, however. But Brett Gelfi coming in with an early shot on goal. Really nice, you know, a little give and go between Matisse and, and Gelfi. And he had a good shot on net there. Just kind of was right to Mancuso. So good sign early on for the Bears offense. Hopefully they can build off of this and Geifey's going to go right back to work. Geifey rolling again the footwork but he coughs it up on the play. Takini. Back. Headed. And Hebert wants to chase it down. O'Toole's going to take him wide. And kick it up and somehow keep it in bounds. Just missed Nelson. Sent way back by Reigns. Nice head by Silva to get it back into the offensive end. Nelson now. Nelson, Nelson scored four goals, like you said, the last yeah. time these two met in the regular season. That was just about a week and a half or two weeks ago. Trying to finish. Mancuso able to recover. Braun was like he was trying to facilitate back to Mancuso so as to prevent a play, but instead came dangerously close to an own goal. Yeah, that was another good opportunity for the Bears, and you can kind of see now that, you know, yes, Westfield's doing a really nice job you know, forcing Bridgewater with these, mm -hmm. you know, dribbling to these double teams and turning the ball over, but slowly but surely they're getting these, these good looks this past couple possessions. We've seen them get closer and closer, so. Bears are trying to put them in rotation, to use a basketball term. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. They're trying to make, make the defense shift and kind of work the size of the field. And Looks like there's going to be a throw in here for Westfield. Whistle, some kind of stop. Ramos is feeling chippy already. We'll see how that unfolds, but it's Westfield ball. Keeney, out of the triple team, across. Brandt, misses his intended target, Allen. And you can see right there, I mean, Westfield was really going nowhere. Some stifling defense by the Bears. And, and same thing with on the opposite side. You know, these players are going one-on-one. -on -one and there's two or three guys wait for him to turn the ball over. And I think the Bears have been more successful when they're moving the ball and, and switching fields, and we'll see if they can continue to do that. DeMello, back to Silva. Silva might be the spaceman, we'll see, yes. Up ahead, trying to set up Halbin, and Mancuso's just gonna barely beat him. I'm a little surprised there was no collision between the two. That was absolutely some fantastic uh, Acrobatics between them. Yeah, and you can definitely see Halbin's speed there closing in. So another close call there from Minskiro, which his heart rate definitely has gone up from the beginning of this match. They've pressed the issue with him, no doubt. Othier couldn't send it anywhere. Big deflection by Gelfi, and he's going to get it back. Up ahead, headed by Brown. Brandt trying to maintain. Gelfi watching, and Brandt. Up a side, and he's going to send that one long across. Jonathan Brandt, from a place known for its soccer, Brazil. Sao Paulo, Brazil. One of two international nice students on the side, the other being Brown. Here comes Ramos. Ramos filled him way in, wants to set somebody up across, but he sends it right to Othier. Brown. Try to outrun Ramos, puts the stutter on him, gets it back. Allen, feed inside, deflected by Silva. Out of bounds, and it's going to be Owl's ball. Some early presses by the Bears. They are really trying to put one in the back of the net in this first half, no doubt about it. And they are pressing the issue firmly. Hebert, up ahead to nobody, ends up with Norton. Nelson, working on Elmasian. They're chasing it down, Norton but he's out of bounds. He's going to make a quick throw in here for Westfield. Bears are definitely feeling the energy now. Owl's looking to respond. Miss on the pass there. Reigns couldn't find his target. DeMello. Back to O'Toole. 
It's interesting to see the Bears' backfield fold in so early. A guy like Ramos, who is usually in his own end, out of necessity, closing way in, trying to set somebody up for an assist on that last major offensive drive. Yeah, I think I think you know it was one of those plays where he just had to go with it. He was able to you know try chip it away and, and get past two defenders, and you know it was a good opportunity for him to set someone up. Just you know, it's a lot going back and forth, especially when the game's been so, you know, pinball back and forth to, you know, get make sure you have guys in your offensive zone, you know, ready for a cross, ready ready to be there on the other end. So hopefully Bridgewater, you know, they've had a few opportunities here, really, really good opportunities, and we'll see if they can continue to um, to do that. Nelson's got it in the corner now. He crosses it in nicely. This is going to be a cut, Big stop by Brown there on the play. It was two or three guys, and now it looks like there's a Westfield Kivo, defender. Kivo Brown is shaking up on the play and taking a second to check himself on his hands and knees. Kivo Brown had a big stop with that header, but at what cost? He's taking a second to get up. Kivo Brown, as we mentioned, from Jamaica, played his high school ball in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Looks like he's going to be coming off on his own power, which is a good thing. He's you know, going very gingerly, so it's going to be applause here from the crowd. Brown, a hardcore backfield guy for these Owls. Typically spends all of his time back there, and you've seen just in the last couple of minutes... You know, there was a questionable play back to Mancuso, but he's had some pretty big stops on the defensive end for the Owls so far. Yeah, and he's definitely had to, to be steady here for them and make some, make some big-time plays. Now it's going to be he's a drop ball here miss. to Matisse. Matisse is going to kick it out to Silva. Zach Matresha comes in for Brown. Bears will make a substitution of their own. Evans is into the game replacing Bolos. Just over 13 to play in the first half. It feels like this one has flown which is very intriguing for a scoreless game. Here's Evans, working on the near side already, back to Ramos. Ramos, the stutter, it paid off. He can't make magic happen twice, and that one's picked off by Allen. Dodrill, back up. Reigns up ahead. And the Owls are trying to set up more assertively now, that one was to nobody, maybe for Hebert, but O'Toole wrestles it away instead. Nice play by O'Toole, <coughs> who's been very steady back there for the Bears so far. And O'Toole still at it, playing some tremendous defense. Now there's going to be a whistle here. Maybe it looks like, I think O'Toole kind of clipped his guy, on accident of course, I think he was just trying to, to make... Like there's going to be a free kick here. And an accident, I think that was more of a frustration 
kind of foul there from Zamel. They had so much momentum, and then he turned the ball over, so it's going to kind of stop play here. Long shot by Mancuso. Nelson now has it, and he's going to send it way up. Goes all the way to the Westfield bench. Still scoreless, ten and a half to go in the first half here at Swenson Field. Winner of this game plays Framingham State, the top seed in the conference, on Friday in Framingham. Deflected by O'Toole. Easy work for Russell to recover and he. Evans. Watched closely by Matresha. Back to Ramos. Across to O'Toole. Some good Under passing. Play. Some good passing here between the Bears and time is running out like you just mentioned in this first half for both teams and like you said I can't believe it's flown by this this action packed I would call it first half with no score. Haben across to Evans. They're going to try to break faster again and see if they can run this one back. Evans is pushed. Whistle. Foul. Couldn't have been clearer. Matthew Allen with the extracurricular. And it'll be Bears ball. Very good opportunity here for the Bears. And as the drum is lively now. And <laughs> let's go Bears. It's starting to feel very soccer gamey. Drums playing. Crowd yelling. It's going to be another free kick. Setting up for that one is Matias. Looks like Matias is going to take the free kick here. He's going to send it in. Matias less cut than he thought, but it's still able to mix into the group. Halvin trying to recover it. Across big deflection there. Ouch. Somebody's that. forehead got a piece of that. Yeah, there's so many guys. And another deflection. There's so many people in front. It's just the ball's getting deflected right off of people's faces and heads. So Looked like it was either Dennehy or Dodrill that got a piece of that and maybe both. Yeah, so at this point when it's the playoff, you're using every part of your body to deflect <laughs> the ball. If that includes your face, it's going to be your face. You saw that earlier already from Kivo Brown. Put his head on the line on a couple of defensive stops. He is taking a breather now. Now Matisse kind of has it. He's kind of dribbling with no defender. Now he's going <laughs> to get the ball out. Into the game is Healy. a couple more. Nick Brown comes in for the Owls. He'll replace Dennehy. Healy, the Irishman, comes in for DeMello. That one is just a hole. Big deflection by Mancuso. Really nice strike by number 15, Matisse. Puts a lot of, a lot of English on that. Since, you know, Mancuso to now make another save. So he's had to make some big plays for this Westfield defense. And now we're going to see a corner kick, another set play here for the Bears. See what they can do with it. Matias with service in. Wants to set somebody up, and the Bears are feeling the energy. He misses everybody on the initial shot, but it's back into the group. Halbin trying to keep it. He'll be wide. Nice idea by Halbin, but just a little wide and high. He was maybe just trying to float it in because they've been shooting it from the outside, and it's been uh -huh. getting deflected, so he was trying a different approach. So good idea. But yet again, the Bears are getting so close on this offensive end. After some early offensive malaise by both of these sides, like you said, Bears really are pressing the issue through the last, say, 20 minutes or so of play. Just under seven to play in the half. Still scoreless. Nelson wants to break in with it. Nelson wants to do something, and he does! He has a goal by number 23 of David Nelson. He strikes again against this West Bay team. David Nelson had four goals the last time these two sides moved up. And he puts the first one on the board tonight, one nil Bears. And as the, the stadium's rocking, the drum is rolling here from the, the women's team, and, and the energy definitely has picked up, and really is by David Nelson, and, you know, this could be what they needed. They were kind of, you know, the game was back and forth for a while, and it just took that one break, and David Nelson basically picked up where he left off. He's like, I can spare these guys and score four goals last game, and he chipped in another one. Nelson. His eighth of the season, fifth against Westfield. Gelfi credited with an assist on the play. 
three points altogether shared among them. And the Bears lead 1-0 with six and a half to play in the first half. And you know what, for the Bears, I know there's only six and a half minutes. You know, they can push for another goal, but if they can finish this half strong, I think that's all we are asking for from this, this Bears team because we, you know, seem so far that this game's going to be, like, tough, gritted out sort of playoff game. It looks Out. like there's going to be another call here against Westfield, so another good opportunity for the Bears. Bears goal. Scored by number one. 23, David Nelson! <laughs> Assisted by number 7, Brett Gelfi at 641 of the first half. So Bears will get another That's free Nelson kick out of the foul. Gelfie at 641. Matias with service again, and we'll see how this one unfolds. Staying in, it finally headed out by Dodrell. That one's going to be wide, easy work from Ancuso. I think Nelson was getting a little fancy there. He's like, hey, maybe I can strike it from, from long distance and see if something will happen, but that's going to go out of bounds for a, a goal kick here for Westfield. And honestly, for Westfield, I think what they need to do is just kind of keep this a one-goal game and, and stay tough. Maybe they can catch a break, you know. See if they can get a one-on-one a, a -on -one situation with their their best goal scorer, which is Hebert. You never know. As Hebert ha has the ball in his hand, speaking of him. Hebert across. And now the Westfield backfield is folding in, pulled away. Healy. Gelfi with the assist tonight. Trying to cut across to Nelson yet again. Nelson, the walk in, cut, big stop by Mancuso. He puts that one in the sky to prevent goal number two. Nelson getting some good opportunities here, forcing another um, corner kick for the Bears, and they got like four and a half minutes, so they can kind of take their time and, and set this thing up. And, you know, the Bears, you know, we saw that was a live goal, you know, in action mm -hmm. by, by Nelson. But with these set plays, they're very dangerous, especially with the header. You know, look for for that on this on the set play here. It looks like they'll try to capitalize. Yeah. Matias Mancuso had given up that corner. Matias with service in, and immediately the energy. Allen just trying to get it the heck out of there. Matias. They play by Healy to just kind of spray it out wide, but Matias is going to turn it over. Allen trying to hang on. Matias trying to recover his mess. He's going to foul Allen. And Keeney will get things started. Dodrell. Back. Looks like Elmasian. Elmasian. Airtime. Matias. Up to Halbin. Pushed around. No whistle on the play. And now a whistle on the play as Jacoby Othier goes steamrolling for a second. I don't think he liked that call very much. Can you blame him? The really? way they ran back. <laughs> Good opportunity here for the Bears, you know, with a set play. As we all know, athletes famously love getting foul calls. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> they love that. So Bears will take the opportunity to set up. O'Toole puts the ball at exactly midfield, and he's trying to direct some traffic. He had about three minutes here left in this first half, so he can really be strategic, and no doubt he's going to be looking for David Nelson. And he was, but that one went far. Goal kick for Mancuso. Under three to play. Bears lead 1-0. A lot of head action finally back on the floor. Hebert hits the deck. And a foul, that's going to go on Silva. And he wasn't feeling that for a second, but he's not going to argue quite at her. Actually, he might. Whoa, some pushing. I'm not sure if this is everything that the uh, crowd is making it out to be. A couple of extracurricular yeah, pushes, but it didn't appear to exactly be it wasn't a lot, the but genesis of a fight. Yeah, it was a little bit of a, hey, back up, maybe one of those yeah. kind of love tap kind of, but it's a little bit that's unnecessary. That's what it seemed like. But you know what, this is the tension, like we mentioned before, the playoffs, you your emotions are a little bit more heightened, and the teams that can stay the calm and kind of stick to their game plan is going to have more success, and that's just kind of what it comes down to. The, so far, the Bears kind of struggled at the beginning, but they're getting back to their strength. 
World Cup is just weeks away and the crowd sounds like they're already prepared for it. 1-0 Bears, a minute and a half to go in the first half. Healy up ahead. Ramos folding line across the header. Alvin Aiken! What a beautiful heading by number 21, Will Halden, who kind of just jumped up and flipped it in his head for another Bears goal. I mean, he can't wait it up any better than that. I don't think he can. Unbelievable. Well, Halloween was yesterday, but the Bears have given the Owls quite a spook in the early going. 2 0 Bridgewater with under a minute and a half to go in the first half. And I can tell you, they're really going to jump all and down there, and, and it's really good to see, you know, the players and the, the women's team come out and support their men's team. And, you know, the Bears, you know, off to the slow start, but now have really, really picked it up with the Nelson goal and the Halden header, we can call it now, uh, that, just hit, that just struck. It's a narrative. It was yeah. handy. It was beautiful. That's what it was. Ramos and Evans credited with assists on the play. It is Halbin's first goal of the year. Big time goal. Playoff goal. Came Can't through clutch. Yeah. Bears are hoping this one's on ice, but you never know. This Westfield side with an okay, well, really both of these sides, with just okay yeah. seasons. But either one of them poised to come back if they... Put in the grind. Interesting to note, the last time these two met in the playoffs, it, we've, I feel like I've mentioned it a million times already, just one all-time playoff meeting between these two programs. Bridgewater State High School! Scored by number 21, Will Halden! <laughs> Assisted by number 14, Jacob Ramos, and number 6, Colin Evans, at 122 of the first half. Man, they really like that drum down there. They're uh, <laughs> whacking that thing away. The energy's working. Bears lead 2 nothing with just seconds to go in the opening half. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, That'll probably five, be where things four, are sewn up three, at halftime. Two, one. So after 45 minutes, Bears up 2 nothing in a win-or-go-home matchup with the Owls of Westfield State. We'll see how this one unfolds. 45 more minutes. Coming up right after this here on the Bears Sports Network. Yeah, and perfect start for the Bears. We'll see what they had in the, in the second half. We'll be right back with you after halftime here on BSN. Thank you. 
One half down, one to go here at Swenson Field on the campus of Bridgewater State University. It's the Massachusetts State Collegiate Athletic Conference men's soccer quarterfinal. Four-seeded Bridgewater up 2-0 on five-seeded Westfield as we start the second half. I'm Matt Donahue. And I'm Olivia Jettick. And, and like we've talked about, and we were talking about at halftime, the two-goal lead by Bridgewater, exactly, you know, the situation and the place that these Bears want to be in and definitely you know from Westfield State I want to come out swinging and give it all I can and this half we might see a little bit more physicality as you know towards the end of the first half we saw a little bit more pushing and shoving and so it's going to be interesting to see how this second half is going to play out here at Swenson Field. If you're just joining us this is the second all-time postseason meeting between these two programs in the MASCAC. First meeting Bears came away with the win 2-0 Eight wild, uh, eight wild cards, eight yellow cards shown in that match. <laughs> Nothing quite as chippy so far, but like you said, Olivia, these two are definitely starting to press the issue with each other a lot more. Bears having a lot more success on that front. We've seen goals from David Nelson and Will Halbin. A header goal from Halbin just in the first half. Owls are going to look to press the issue themselves and try to bring this one a little bit closer. So that one is out of bounds. Looks like they're going to earn themselves a corner kick here. Indeed they will. So good opportunity here, you know, in the start of the second half for Westfield. Yeah, you, you know, they want to get good early opportunities, and this is, you know, a perfect way for them to get things started here. 
So the first corner of the night for the Owls. Haven't had a whole lot of chances on that front. Only two corners of the night before this were both courtesy of the Bears. Service in, and that one is well cleared, at least for a little bit by Bridgewater. Still in their own end. Ooh! Big hit. Allen is up. There you, go, there you go, your first yellow card right there is going to be given to Allen. So, <laughs> seven to go, I guess, is, as you could say. So, dangerous play there. And hopefully the crowd around here. We saw some chipping towards the end of the first half. A little bit of extracurricular. There's definitely some chippiness, and they're going to stop the time here and, you know, take the minute here to make sure. I'm not even sure who ended up on the ground. There was just so many players in that area. And it looks like, oh, then maybe it was Silva. Silva, who's already got the mask on. He came into this with some facial protection, and he's coming off under his own power, but he will get a breather after a big hit on that play. Alan, as you mentioned, shown the yellow card. First card shown to either side tonight. So definitely a good sign for Bridgewater that he's able to kind of come off on his own power. And it looks like number 19, Daniel Santos, is going to enter the game here for the Bears. He's going to look to hopefully make an impact. As Silva is going to exit with an injury, and hopefully he's, you know, they're going to check him out here. He's okay, and he's going to be able to enter because he's been a crucial mm -hmm. part in this back line here for the Bears. As we saw, came off under his own power. Very encouraging to see that. Hope, uh, hoping all's well on that front. Saw earlier another big headshot that sent Kivo Brown for the Owls to the bench for a while. He still is not back in this match. Owls are going to keep it in their own end now. Across, here's Elmasian. Elmasian, Johnson gives it back to Elmasian. Yeah, it looks like he's trying to look for somewhere to go here, but this this Bears defense, like you just saw there, in point. easily <laughs> taken away. They're just kind of like almost boxing them in when they get the ball on the sideline. But yet again, we kind of see some pinballing action from both of these teams. O'Toole's just going to say, I'm going to boot it right in the air. And O'Toole's got a leg, and he's putting it to good use indeed. Rodriguez trying to get it back. Putting on the wheels is Allen. And he won't chase it down. There's lead 2-0. Just over 41 to play in regulation. And unlike the regular season, one thing that's very interesting is that if this thing does get knotted up, if and when the Owls find the two goals they're looking for, there will indeed be overtime if it should come to that. Not something we saw throughout the regular season. These yeah. things got sewn up at 90 minutes exactly, no stoppage time, nothing of the sort. So it'll be interesting if that ends up coming into play. Bears, of course, would like to prevent that from being a consideration. Definitely. They don't <laughs> want that. They're like, don't even say that. They, they enjoy a two-goal advantage. Yeah. Hoping to avoid being on the receiving end of an announcer's jinx if such a thing should exist. Ramos with the throw in. And trying to keep a grip on it is Johnson. Good pressure by Matisse to force the... Now there's going to be a Bears throw in. Well, looks like there's going to be a stoppage of play. We're going to see exactly what's getting hashed out down here. I'm not quite sure what the dispute is. Must have been cleared up. Ramos will throw it in. I don't know what was, what was the dispute there this between the teams. Just some maybe some chippiness, or the referee wasn't thrilled on what was going on, so we had to stop play. Healy trying to poke in, stripped away, big grab by Dodrill, and he's trying to break up. Dodrill up ahead wants to be the setup for Allen, but it's going to go just a little wide. Ramos watching him and deflects it out. Jacob Ramos has been very, very strong on that 
wing defender. He's pretty much stopped mm -hmm. everything, and he stopped that near breakaway goal by Hebert. And, so. and Jacob Ramos, notably, as that one is headed wide, Dennehy wanted to finish it off but just couldn't. Jacob Ramos notably, notably has been way further up on the pitch than usual. He's a backfield guy, usually hangs well back and facilitates from the defensive end, but instead he has folded it far in on a number of these plays. Tried to set up an assist earlier in the first half, came all the way up really beyond the Owls' 18. Nelson who has changed number. Nelson usually wears number 23. He got blood on that kid, has changed to number 22 for this half. Nelson. That was going to be double teamed. Oh. He kind of nutmegged one of the defenders, but the third one came, so it's kind of hard to beat three defenders, but good effort there by Nelson. Norton in open field, wanted to set up Gelfi, but lost on the pass. Matisse is back. just able to win that back, apparently. Now healy has got it. Healy's in trouble. Chips it back to Ramos. Ramos now far further back. Will's just, well, Russell's just going to say, I'm just going to boot it. Get it out of Gelfi with an aggressive play. Gelfi trying to break up, wants to set up Nelson. Nelson looking for his shot. Nelson wants to be an assist. Nearly was. Haben was looking for number two, but a big deflection there. A couple bodies got in the mix, most notably Mancuso, the keeper. Ramos with the fancy footwork. He's up here again. Ramos folding well in. We saw that a lot in the first half. Trying to keep this up. Matias puts it in the air. And finally sent backwards by Othier. Substitution by the Owls. Edwin Zaruma Buri comes in in the place of DeAndre Rodriguez. Zaruma Buri from Northampton. Big boot by Santos. And I will have to say so far that the combo up front with Halbin and Nelson has been working. Both have goals, and as you saw there, another great opportunity by Nelson who crossed it in trying to get Halbin another goal, but another close save there by Menscuso. So he's been at work all night, and that combo of Halbin and Nelson has been very dangerous. Halbin gets a big push from and a hold. That was an American football play right there by Owen Reigns. Held up Halbin, and that's going to be a foul on Westfield. I'm hearing some talk in the booth, and it's true. Will Halbin, skilled at what he does, not necessarily the biggest gentleman on the face of the earth. That foul meant a lot. Tia's some fancy dribbling. Trying to poke it through and does for Norton. Across to Nelson. Nelson, the arc, instead meets Othier. Tool tries to get it wide. Ramos. Ramos with the defense. That's what he does. Deflection. Trying to chase it back. Hebert's trying to collect. It's a wrestling match. Hebert's collecting himself. Ramos didn't seem to be thrilled with the call, but I don't believe a card has been shown. Ramos is still commiserating about the issue with his teammates. <laughs> looks like there was a, maybe a yellow card. I'm not sure. We'll see if it just popped. Just a, looked like just a whistle. Oh, no, I stand corrected. He was shown a yellow card. Was, he, was it you, Ramos? You are correct. Was it Ramos? It was indeed. Yeah. So Ramos has shown that yellow card. Now each side has drawn one yellow. I was about to say that that movement by the official looks a little bit too aggressive to not be a card. I didn't see one at the moment. Good eye on the on the card there. So it's a free kick. We've got a clock issue that's being tended to. Now we're in business. Free kick for the Owls. Inside, up in the air. Matias looked like he got the best boot off of that, but it's still firmly in Bears territory. Nelson. Up ahead, deflection out of bounds off of Dodrell. And 
David Nelson is hearing some words of support from the crowd. Nelson with a goal on the evening. Throw into Healy. Healy back to DeMello. DeMello across to Ramos. Missed the intended target, Santos, but no harm, no foul. It goes to Russell. Boot before Hebert could close in on it. Deflection. Haben wants to be the collector. He will not be. That will instead be Almasian. Puts it in the air. Healy. Trying to keep a grip on it. He's got long legs. He's putting them to use, but he coughs it up to Almasian. And Almasian will opt to just send it out of bounds. But the Bears get a throw in firmly in Owl territory. Good pressure by Halbin. Shed throw-ins. Gonna go to Norton. Norton's gonna have a big Norton wants to be somebody's assist or even a goal, but he won't be. That's just a direct line to Mancuso. Good idea, though. Mancuso is probably a sigh of relief that came right to him. DeMello, it's worth noting, whose name I mentioned just a minute ago or so, came in as a substitute for Matias. Substitutions for each side. Rivera comes in for Reigns for the Owls. For the Bears, Montrond is back in in the place of Brett Gelfi. That looked like it was Allen there with kind of a diving, heading effort, but he's a little too far, I think, for that for that head to be strong enough. But good hustle by him. Well, Russell's going to collect, and he's going to send that a far distance. Gelfi, as we should note, who just hit the pine. Credit where it's due, an assist in a playoff game tonight. Helpful performance for the Halifax native. That one's a little bit too far to be collected by Dennehy. Another blood on the kit situation I've just been made aware of. Silva is now wearing number nine instead of number five. Whistle. I imagine that was offsides. And it was Silva. Silva was who we saw took the big hit just earlier in this half. He's back in it. Yeah, it might have caused him to have some blood, so he's going to switch numbers. He'll be wearing nine from here on out. Ramos deflection. Halbin. Slick slide through, but not enough. And a boom, oh, hold on, cut on a Montrand, hits the top there. What a good chance, right? <laughs> oh. Drops in Montrand, I think skims the goal post. And I think oh, yeah. Ben Scuso might have lost a life there after, after seeing that pass, Thank you know, kind of oh, loosely, yeah. loosely out of the goal. He wanted that kick back. He Definitely. wanted to put a lot more energy on that, just couldn't get the placement on it. You could tell immediately. Montrand had a buffet in front of him, but hits the crossbar on the shot. And it looks like maybe he slipped. That's why the, 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 the clear wasn't s yeah. clean. Maybe? He didn't have a very good angle yeah. on it. Yeah, it's interesting. And, and Robson Montrand was kind of be like, oh, yeah, this is a good opportunity for me, but just skims the crossbar. So good opportunity for him to add on to this lead. But you're going to see the Bears are going to continue with this pressure. Nelson kicked that one into oblivion. A little bit of a deflection. Zaruma Bori couldn't chase it down. Ramos gives it airtime. Easy work for Mancuso. 2 nothing Bears. 31 and a half to play in regulation. Winner plays Framingham in Framingham on Friday. DeMello across. Norton. Nelson behind himself to Halbert. That was pretty. Up across. Nelson trying to chase it back down. Cut on it. Trying to hit a slip. Two tries. I was kicking himself on that one. No fault of his, but Bongo slipped and couldn't collect. Two Bears had a fantastic opportunity to put that in the net. And a nice, another nice cross there by Nelson. Bears fighting to keep it in the Owl's end. And Healy in a bit of a wrestling match there. I'm surprised the foul wasn't called on behalf of Hebert. Nelson behind himself again. Alvin trying to close on deep. What a quick save by Mancuso. 
would not let himself be fooled again by number 21. Ramos, big air on the big return. And you can really see now uh, Nelson and, and Halvin, both juniors, are, are really comfortable out there playing with each other. All these fancy passes and give and goes. Mm -hmm. You can see they're really comfortable up top with each other. So they're definitely going to keep this combination going as long as you can. It you know. It's interesting to note the crowd is really into it. It sounds cliche, but the crowd is feeling themselves tonight. We've seen a lot of energy on pretty much every major offensive drive that the Bears have tried to assemble tonight, certainly on each of those two goals. And a whistle and a foul. Owls seem to think it's going their way, and they appear to be right. Oh, no, I stand corrected. Well, that goes to show you what some posturing by the other team can do for setting your viewpoint. Ramos will have the throw in. And I think to, s to say here, if the Bears can get another goal, I think th this crowd will lose its mind definitely for sure. Halbin is rewarded for his hustle with a breather. He'll hit the bench. Rickson comes in in his place. Halbin with a goal on the night. I think it's interesting because Rickson on here has mostly been known as, as a defender. Now he's up front with Nelson. So maybe a, a different look for him. Maybe he's... We've seen, well a lot of we've seen a lot of guys playing outside their position tonight. Nelson wants to put himself back in. Trying to put some cut on it, and he does! Killing the net for David Nelson and the Bears with a 3 nothing advantage. I mean, this could just be me, but I think he likes playing against West Coast State. How did he even get enough cut on that? I think, he, you know what it was? He, he was really working the right side, and he was able to catch his defender off. Just a little bit, cut it in, and just kind of snuck it past this goose egg to make it 3 0. Unbelievable goal by Nelson. And the Bears are looking, I don't know why he thinks they're looking really comfortable here right now. Bamba is credited with an assist on the play, and Nelson with his sixth goal of the year against Westfield. This is now his second multi goal match against the Owls this year. So I, guess, yeah. I guess it's fair to say they don't like playing against them. <laughs> the Owls seem to smell a fire sale on the horizon. They're going to have a number of substitutions. Out is Johnson. Out is Almasian. Seemingly out is Rivera, who came in not all that long ago. Seemingly out is their goals leader, Hebert. And this one is pretty much checked out. Garcia comes in in the place of Ramos, and the Owls are in the hunt for a miracle at this point. And I think for the Bears, you know, the Owls are hunting goals. But for the Bears, I think they just got to stay strong and, and stay consistent and, you know, keep working and, and work on some things that they're not comfortable with. And, and you know, fingers crossed. And if everything goes well, they'll, they'll be preparing for Friday against Framingham. If they're playing this way, they have a good shot. Wateka is back in in the place of Allen for the Owls. If Borakai back in, he replaced Hebert. Both Wateka... And a board has started. Rivera, Johnson, and Almation are all sitting down. Their replacements. Jesse and John with John Martin and Scott Porter. Assisted by number 12, Karsten Bolo. That's Nelson from Bolo's at 29.06 of the second half. Just over 28 to play. Owls need three goals in that span. Or their playoff hopes go to the farm upstate. Three nothing Bears. Healy at midfield. Oh, Bears are still trying to press the issue. Reardon. Norton will chase it down. Distance. And he'll put some space on that. He has to set up Rickson. A couple on him. He's double teamed. He's going to have to fall back. Slides it through to nobody in particular in the Owls clear. Good chance by Rickson, but... Matricia with the boot. Just like both teams, he kind of got swallowed up there by no. all three of the, the defenders. And that's been happening on both sides. It's worth noting as we see, obviously, of course, the Bears, one of the bigger D3 sports powerhouses in general. Nelson trying to break in for another one. Big deflection by Mancuso, but it's still live. Here I was thinking this was over Montreal, and that one is wide. 
another good opportunity. This is unbelievable. He almost got another goal. And, you know, Nelson's on a roll. He's really been carving up this defense. And even though that got deflected, he still had another opportunity to score again. So. Owls made another substitution while I was ruminating. Dennehy is out. His replacement is Alfonso Lopez. Lopez from Ipswich. And it kind of reminds me, you know, a lot of, you know, I, th I look at where some of these players are from. There's a decent amount of Southeastern Mass rep on this Owl side. Falmouth, North Attleboro. You know, a couple from local. A couple of North Attleboro guys. Adams. Matricia, who's out there seeing time right now for the Owls, the senior. That one is just too easy for Russell to grab. Russell's going to boot that one away. It's going to go over pretty much every defender. No one gets ahead on that until it's kind of settled. And that ball's just going to go right out of bounds here. We're going to have a sub for the Bears. Still 25 and a half minutes to go in this match, but both teams, it would seem, kind of sense the end. Definitely, yeah. I mean, Bridgewater <laughs> definitely is feeling good now after that third goal, but looks like there's going to be another call here against Westfield. So another good set opportunity play here for the Bears, where I think, you know, it's very underrated here. Montron puts a beautiful ball into the box. Tool heads it. Lots of action going on here. Now DeMello has it. Evans. Trying to find his work. Across wants to be somebody's assist. Won't be because it's headed out of the way by Matricia. Montron inside. Mancuso not leaving that one for Evans. I Enough damage already done. Under 25 to play in the match. Definitely Mancuso has been, has been challenged here so far. Emilio Mancuso coming into this match allowed just over two goals per game on average. He has let three slip through his fingers tonight. Two have been off the feet of David Nelson wearing two different jerseys, and that's going to be a corner kick for the Owls. I mean, we've definitely seen the physical play here. Two guys on Bridgewater's roster have had to change jerseys because of blood, so <laughs> blood has been drawn. Oh, yes. One of them was David Nelson. Two different numbers, two different goals. Looks like Owls here we're, we're going to have a corner from the Owls. Service from Wateka. Deflected. Nelson trying to escort it away, and he does. Big bounce initially by Russell. Nelson's got an interesting way of dribbling. He's got the crossover on the footwork there. He works it up the field like a basketball player, for goodness sake. Yeah, it was a good opportunity, and that got deflected by... I'm not sure which defender it was, but good opportunity... But no, I, I don't think any of the um, forwards here for Bridgewater are expecting that chip, so they didn't really run after it. So kind of an opportunity missed. Nelson gets his pocket pick. That doesn't happen often. It was Wateka who did it. Up ahead. Right. Big deflection, and it is not even a corner kick. Out of bounds, but it is Owl's ball. A tool is like on a slip and slide there, just sliding and deflecting that ball nicely. Or like he was doing the dance with a Borakai. I think there's going to be a call here against Westfield. And Silva's going to send it. A little surprised that this one isn't getting chippier yet. I mean, we've seen some pushes, but we haven't seen, you know, the contest. Just one yellow card shown to each side, and it didn't appear to be for a fight or anything like that. Some fancy okay. footwork back across. That one is saved in midair by Mancuso. What a dive. Evans just had no chance of getting past a jump like that. The call, in fact, I stand corrected. The last whistle was an offsides on Westfield. Yeah, it was a nice, good opportunity again, and the Scarrow had to throw his body out to make another save. He's been doing a lot here for Westfield to keep this lead three to nothing. There was an attempt made at corralling that in by Silva. Keyword attempt. That was ball, 22 to play in the match. Bears enjoy a three-goal lead. Rothier. 
boot. More cut than he maybe would have liked. Healy in the air. Clarence there. Now a mistake. Now Rickson has it. Back to now Nelson. Nelson's trying to close in, but that one's going to be wide anyway. I think Rickson there was, I mean, sorry, Nelson was looking for some sort of call. Won't get it. Just a run-of-the-mill goal kick for Mancuso. And he's going to take his time setting up for it. You could just tell after that third goal. Westfield knew this one was set. Santos is back into the match for the Bears. O'Toole is the man he's replacing. You could just tell pretty much immediately. They started moving guys on and off the field in large numbers. Spent a whole lot of substitutions quickly. Y you wonder what the hope is for the second line right now if they want to come back. That one's easy for Mancuso to grab. Yeah, I mean, if definitely if they're going to make the comeback. Now now is their time to strike. No they kidding. 20, <laughs> 20 on the match. Yeah, <laughs> so they got to get busy fast. And, you Three know, nothing Bears. We don't have the full, we haven't seen a full season worth of this team, so we don't really know their offensive firepower. But we can definitely see that the, the Bears are very, very comfortable right now and seem to be taking things over. And they're, still, and they're still pressing. Like, you see the crosses from from Nelson and on the far side to Mello. They're getting the ball in in the offensive zone. And yeah, neither side seemingly has given up much of the hustle. Nelson on that last possession got crossed up a little by Lopez. DeMello. DeMello's got a little bit of a crazy settle there. He has to send that one way back, or perhaps didn't choose to. Silva. Big deflection. Santos, chased down at high speed, but if Boracay couldn't get over to it in time. Not that he minds, it's Al's ball. Looks like this is going to be a goalkeeper switch for the, for the Westfield State Owls. There's some more substitutions, and guys who have not seen a whole lot of time tonight are already hitting the bench for the Owls. Maybe they smell a comeback. Maybe they don't. Andrew Mason comes in for Zaruma Bori. Mancuso, indeed, you mentioned, is swapped out his replacement is a fellow junior, Colin O'Brien. We'll get some numbers on him in just a second. And Jamin Chi and Boracay sit down in favor of Zach Susi and Dominic Sorelli, respectively. Tumble, no whistle on the play. Nelson comes away with it. Now Rickson has it. Some time and space. He's going to try to send it up to Evans, and that's going to be taken away. But Evans takes it back nicely. And well, I have something up to Rickson. Rickson has a good opportunity. He's going to cross it. That was another shaky opportunity there. Colin O'Brien, the junior from Windsor Locks, Connecticut. This is just his seventh game of the year. He also has four starts, though. Allows more goals on average per match than any other goalie on this Owls roster. Just shy of three. But a save percentage of 70.5%. Bears, if they can hold on to this lead, and Westfield seems more convinced than Bridgewater is that Bridgewater will hold on to this lead. If Bridgewater does maintain this lead, they will move on Friday night to play top-seeded Framingham State in Framingham. That same night, we'll be back here at Swenson Field for the start of the MAZCAC Women's Soccer Tournament. Bears playing a yet-to-be-determined opponent, last I checked. Now the whistle here against Westfield. So, you know, these little ticky-tack fouls are starting to build up here for the Owls. Silva's going to send the free kick away. Still masked, of course, and a New Jersey. So he's <laughs> he has quite a look going on for him. He's been through it tonight. We've seen a couple of big plays, guys like Silva, Kivo Brown for the Owls have put their bodies on the line for big defensive plays. <laughs> Now 
17 to play in the match. Time is ticking down here for both squads. And that ball is going to go to Russell. And Russell is going to just outlet it to Norton. That one's deflected out by Porter. Bears are trying to direct traffic, it would seem. Yellow is being shown. Now Nelson's getting Nelson a yellow card. <laughs> Nelson has no idea why that came in. And I'm not quite sure either. Maybe, Maybe we'll some, some sort of delay of game, but why Possible. stop the clock and just... I don't know. That, that, that was kind of a confusing yellow card against Nelson there. That was a creative call, you might say. Third yellow of the night. Bears now have been shown two. One on Nelson and one on Ramos. Allen, the only owl to have been shown a yellow. Now the owls are going to get into Bridgewater's zone dangerously. Good opportunity. Trying to set this one up. Big stop by Russell. Russell comes in clutch again. Now the ball's going to go to Nelson. Sorelli wanted to keep this one from being a shutout. Nelson's getting his jersey pulled. Crowd says, where's the call? Nelson's closing in anyway. He's undeterred. And that one is pushed out, giving up the corner is off here. The official's over here to have a word with some owls. Some physical, physical play and an obvious jersey pull that wasn't called. And now it looks like we're going to have an owl that's down. There's going to be a, a, a pause. I'm not really sure who it is. Maybe it looks like number 14 off the air. I'm not really sure, though. Nelson appears to be among the players being subbed out. And if it is, and it sure looks like he is, what a night. Two goals. This could also protect him, too, because of the physical play. His replacement will be Bolos, who himself has an assist on the evening. And Owls and it is, oh, sorry to mention, it is Othier that is down, and he doesn't look like he's coming off too comfortably. So, not a good sign for the Owls. Looks like someone's going to be coming in for him. He's going to get some help from the trainers. Under his own power, but clearly Ginger looks like on that, uh... Can't tell which leg. He's walking at a bit more of a normal pace now. Matresha will also come off for the Owls. His replacement is Nick Brown. And that one is just vaulted out of there by Alfonso Lopez. Just about 15 to play in the match. Bears in command. Throw in right to Lopez. DeMello. Montron trying to get a foot on it, but just couldn't. Gal's going to earn the throw in here. Norton's going to take that away. He's been doing a lot of that tonight. Some he good, has. good defense from him and some good facilitating out on the outside Norton from can Norton. Norton can make some slick plays that won't necessarily always show up in the stat sheet but are nonetheless impactful. Evans trying to get a grip. Couldn't. Comes away instead to Reardon. DeMello now has it. It's going to be a shot. It's going to be blocked by a couple owls. The ball's going to be lifted into the air. It's going to be passed wide. It's going to be passed up. And Santos cuts it off nicely with a little bit of a diving header. So a nice breaking up, broken up play there by Santos. It was. Another one of those plays. Guys putting their whole bodies on the line. Dodrill. Directly to Montrand. Off of whom it goes out. 3-0 Bears. 13 and a half to play in the match. Seemingly 13 and a half to play in Westfield season. Another block by Santos. And you can really see with this, this Bears defense. They don't do a lot of chasing and jabbing. They kind of wait for Westfield to make a mistake and then mm -hmm. they just capitalize or they double triple team so some good good team defense so far through this game let's see if they can finish the last like 13 mish 
minutes here with you know solid shout out. I think you know Coach Adams and, and this coaching staff would love to see a a playoff shout out. You usually don't see those very often. So happened the last time these two met, like we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, and it sort of bears repeating in context. Second all-time playoff matchup in the Mazcac era between these two sides. Last one came in 2015. Eight yellow cards. I, I just can't get over that stat. Yeah, Eight yellow, yellow cards yellow card. in that game compared to a humble three for tonight. You we'll know. take it. We don't want the aggressive <laughs> play. The and, the bear, and the Bears yeah. came away with the victory. Obviously, both of these programs, for obvious reasons, have had major shakeups since then. But just interesting, the history between these two sides. The recent history between these two sides. When they met up here in the regular season, it was a pretty major Bears victory. Nelson, who has two goals tonight, had a hat trick plus one in that game. And it's pretty much a revolving door for both of these sides on the pitch now. 12 to play. Matias. Now yeah, Rickson has it. Rickson, the stutter went awry. I think Rickson was looking for a handball there, but didn't get it. Up ahead from Susie. Matisse is going to play to the other side wisely. Madden Jr. came in for the Bears, replacing Healy. Brandt came back in for the Owls, replacing Dodrell. Silva. Dropping back. Santos. Airtime. Rickson. Out of his reach. Wateka. Big boot. Wide. Easy work for Russell. Anyway. Both of these teams struggled at times throughout the regular season. Certainly there's a reason they're not the uh, one and two seeds. Bears in yeah, particular kind of flailed a little bit on the season-wide schedule. Spent a lot of the year beneath 500. But you know what, with this, with this sneaky offensive power and speed, I think, you know, they can have a chance to make a pretty good run here in this playoffs if they play to their strengths. And that's what they've tried to do tonight, certainly. They've done what they were allowed, the players who score best, to score easily. Nelson in particular, Halbin, of course, with a goal on the night as well. But this Framingham State side, there's a reason they're the one seed. They're a tough customer. And, and seeming as it will that it will be Bridgewater State meeting them a little further out on the Mass Pike this Friday evening. Bears are going to have a couple of points, I imagine. That one was nearly dangerous. But Russell came out and collected. You've got to imagine, even in a victory like this, there have certainly been some things that they would like back, some plays that they would like back. And it'll be very interesting to see how they respond. We won't have coverage of that game, unfortunately, on the Bears Sports Network, but it'll be very interesting to see how the Bears respond to any of the setbacks they might have faced today, especially certainly the early turnovers. Yeah, definitely, and, and with any game, you know, no matter how much you win by or how perfectly you ex execute your game plan, there's always something that you can work on. And I don't know, for the Bears, maybe just capitalizing more on their opportunities, I think, that would be the biggest for them. But other than that, I, I think defensively they were solid. Well, Russell was awesome in the back, mm -hmm. you know, in goal for them. I think just, you know, putting more in back of the net. Yeah. Is kind of, they kind of struggled with that all season, but, I mean, obviously today they have three goals, and that's no problem. But when you face better teams like Framingham, and uh, you got to be able to capitalize on all mistakes that the other team makes. So it will be important. Well, it will be something to watch. So I'll get presumptuous because we have less than nine minutes left in this match. Bears presumably at this point, barring a miracle on the part of Westfield State, will advance to the semifinals, play Framingham State this Friday in Framingham. Winner of that game plays the winner of either Salem and their game against the three or six seeds. That's Worcester and MCLA. And as, we, as we were just chatting tonight. there, there was a nice shot there by Evans. He uses left foot on that one. 
So another good opportunity for the Bears, you know, just to test it out. You know, I would have liked to see, you know, Evans to get a little bit of more power on that shot. And MCLA, I've just gotten word, in fact, that game, that semifinal game in that neck of it will be Salem and Worcester State. Worcester wow. State has won their match, a 3-0 shutout against MCLA. Worcester State and the Lancers have advanced to their end of the semifinals. And the winner of Salem-Worcester will play the winner of Framingham and presumably Bridgewater. That ball's going to sail over. Russell's going to corral that nice and easily. But still, you know, plays like that, it, it makes you worry. Like, we're up 3 nothing. We don't want to give up a goal now. Of course. You know, you're right. building momentum for going into Friday. You want to finish strong. You don't want to finish kind of shaky. You want to have a good feeling going into this big match on Friday. That one's going to be sent all the way out of bounds by O'Brien. That was a boot. Maybe not quite the angle on that he would have liked. Not something you see goalies do a lot. Yeah. Right out of bounds. He, I don't <laughs> know if he was quite sure what to do. So a lot of times just you're kind of taught to, to clear it out and reset your defense. And that's what a lot of goalies do. Oh, now we're seeing some. Someone else is about to be shown a yellow card. Looks like it might be Brant. And Brant's coming back over to the official for round two. There it is. So now it's, you know, as... Yellow card game. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yellow, yellow cards. Two for say. each side. Brandt is having what appears to be a mostly cordial chat with Montron. Yeah, once they started coming, I was like, oh, no. Now we're, now we're, now we're getting up there. The, the, <laughs> the yellow card amount. Free kick and it's right in! Jack O'Toole with a free kick goal. Boulder smokes. And let me ask you, I don't think the player is ready for that. It's I don't think Jack O'Toole is ready for that. No problem, Jack O'Toole buries it himself with a free kick, long distance call. And if there was any doubt, the Bears have erased it. 4 nothing Bridgewater with 6.44 to play, and this one is done. And I think it was very crucial. I don't think O'Brien, I think O'Brien was maybe trying to set up his defense, and O'Toole was like, I'm going to shoot my shot in, and hopefully it goes in, and beautifully struck, and O'Brien had no chance. We saving that one, to be honest. We were talking just before this broadcast, as uh, foul on Bridgewater, Sorelli hit the deck. We were just talking before this broadcast about, you know, just a little bit about Jack O'Toole, who's normally a backfield guy, makes sense, he's a defender. But he has quite a leg on him. You know, I, I, I know I mentioned it, and certainly he puts it to good use in the backfield, in the defender position. Yeah. Four by number four, I don't think he's going to go tonight. That's just his plan of the year. For O'Toole, yeah. So maybe not his primary goal, but you can see there's a light for him, and, and that's definitely an advantage. Yeah, and also a slow throw. She added a woo to the end of that. Yeah, Coach Adams is yeah. fired up, and why Why not? We're already up 4 nothing, and The energy is permeating the house here tonight at Swenson Field. <laughs> Apparently Swenson has turned to the TD Garden as he alluded. <laughs> so we're told. We'll take it. The joy is palpable at Swenson Field, and these Bears are, no doubt about it, moving on to the semifinals this Friday to face Framingham State. They'll be a tough customer, but the Bears will be coming in with a ton of energy, breaking in his bolos. He's not going to get to it in time. That's out of bounds. Good effort by him, and he was, um, he was headed to the goal on that one. He was looking for a cross. He was ready to to strike again for the Bears. And that's what we want to see. Like, I know they're up four, four goals to none, but still got five minutes left, and this team still wants to work on things and, and build momentum for, you know, you're going to face the number one seed in the tournament for a reason. You want to finish off on a, on a strong foot, and I, I think they are, and I think Jack O'Toole kind of put the, like I like to say, the, the, the ribbon on the present there, getting them ready for, for this Friday. Three different Bears have put four goals in the net tonight. And honestly, but that's what we want to see, some variety. Like, yes, yes it's awesome that, you know, Nelson was able to bury two, but you also see Halbin, 
you know, connects on a goal and then a tool, you know, an unlucky, you know, unlikely customer who plays in the back was able to get one in the back of the net. And that just shows you this variety of, of scoring options this bare team exactly. can and provide. And, and it's even the kind of plays. You see, you know, Nel Nelson taking it to the house by himself. Sure, he does that. Yeah. But you see Halbin with a header shot. You see O'Toole, like you just mentioned, you know, usually a backfield guy gets a free kick and turns it into a goal. Right, exactly. From, from, I don't, even, I don't even know where it was. Probably a good 40? 40 yards. Yeah. Probably a good 40 yards he sent that thing right in. Exactly. No chance. So it's, it's good to see the – because then it's so hard to game plan against a team that has so many weapons. Mm -hmm. That corner kick is out. Montron has. He's going to send it back in. Another pattern that's going to be blocked wisely by a Westfield State defender. Maybe that looked like Allen. No. Far side. And yet another Bears corner. This one's going to be Bolos. Three and a half to play, but this one's done. Four nothing Bears. And they will advance. Nice ball. That's going to go over everyone. Good good luck there. Deflection off of Montrand. That's going to be a goal kick for O'Brien. A quick play out here by O'Brien. So you can see Westfield still not giving up. They're still giving it our and all. And who can blame them? Certainly when you love a game. Oh. <laughs> Taking a second to get up is Montrand, and he's down. That was a big hit by Sorelli. And now I'm sensing some chippiness. Montrand still down. Not good news here that for left the Left leg is in pain. Robson Montrand would be a considerable loss if he goes down even in the closing minutes. So they're gonna take a, a moment here to, I mean Montrand is technically off the field but they're gonna make sure he's all right and hopefully it looks like there's gonna be a sub that's coming in for him. I think they're kind of waiting on the trainers here. My eyes don't deceive me. It looks like it'll be Nick Anselmo filling in for him in the closing minutes of this playoff match. Montron's still not up. He's on his hands and knees and just barely starting to position himself up. Yeah, it looks like he's really having a hard time getting himself up. He's hurting bad. That right leg is not in great shape. Or actually, it looked like his left he was holding more. Yeah, he's walking gingerly on that left as that one goes out of bounds. So this one is pretty much sewn up, but some implications for the future now, even beyond the immediate ramifications of there being a match this Friday. Now we see Montron starting to walk it off. Looks like he's a little bit more confident on that leg, but that was a huge hit yeah, so that he took he's from Sorelli right, on the play. It was funny. He was kind of going back and forth, and the referee was like, no, go this way. And he was like, I'm just trying to go back to my bench. So hopefully he can kind of walk it off and <coughs> get back there. Owl still trying. That one was slowed down a bit by the Bears. Valiant effort by Porter, but he couldn't complete the job. Now here comes the cart for him. Finally, they got the <laughs> the rescue vehicle coming over to Montron. Hopefully he's all right. Oh, 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 Evans! Oh, 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 the Bears on Evans! Now the whole, whole bench is coming over now. I don't know if they'll play the music, the crowd's making it themselves, the bass drum is rolling, and the Bears are just adding insult to injury now. There's the music. What will we do about it? Evan scores, Bears up 5-0, and it looks like some of the Westfield fans are respectively exiting the game left, as I like to call it. Austin Bolos picks up his second assist of the night as well on the play, and it's a 5 nothing Bears lead. Okay. There's somebody who's been a little bit of an unsung hero tonight, Austin Bolos, yeah. two different assists on the evening. He's been very helpful on the uh, offensive end as well. It is Evans' first goal of the year on the play. Congratulations, a nice big playoff goal for him, so congratulations. Everybody's shining for Bridgewater State here at Swanson Field tonight.
And Westfield is just going to try to escape with some dignity at this point, to be quite frank. Up ahead, Susie trying to arc it in. Anything too far. Minute to play. One minute remaining in the game. One minute. And, I mean, I don't want to. Call revival. I don't want to anything too soon. They're very really comfortable here. You like a chopper. Yeah. yeah. Russell will also be credited with an assist on Evans' Assisted goal. Assisted by number 12, Karsten Belows, and number one, Will Russell. They got the hockey assist on that one. The goal is. <laughs> yeah. The Bears goal, Evans from Belows and so Russell. So impressive, impressive feat here for the Bears. Half. Really They're going to have the lead at the end of the match from now on. Here's Rickson. Rickson Through, has a different word. Direct hit, Anselmo. Anselmo wants to set somebody up. Oh, again. He does. A nice ball. Coming close. Again, Evans. And this one is stopped by O'Brien. Evans finishes it off. Two goals for Colin Evans on the night. His first two of the year. What? And now it's just getting crazy. I don't, I don't know how it is. Should we just mic drop? Like it's like nothing, yeah. It's oh, you know what it was? O'Brien initially stopped it, but then he hit it way too far, and he was like, "All right, we just stop it." He didn't get as much of a grip on it as he would like, did Evan? It's getting crazy yeah, right now. Evan's got all the grip he would like. He yeah. took it off. I don't know. Two goals in the space of two minutes. Two goals in the space of two minutes. Two goals in Two goals in the space of Less than a minute, just a matter of seconds. Yeah, it's, it's separating the first two goals of the year for Spence, Evans. Swenson Fields stuff is becoming a party now. And the this one's run's gone. going, the woos are going. We're at the TD Garden now. Evans goal scored by number six, Colin Evans. <laughs> wow. If two goals in less than a minute from Colin Evans didn't tell you. This one's done. Your final score here at Swanson Field. Bears, six. Owl, zero. Bears, without a doubt, advance to the Mouse Cack semifinals this Friday at Framingham State. It'll be a tough battle, but they'll come in with a ton Bears of momentum. Six. Owl, zero. Whole lot of scoring State tonight. Night Two goals for David Nelson. Two goals for Colin Evans. A goal each for O'Toole and Halbin. Two assists you for Bellows, an assist for Evans, an assist for Brett Gelfi, an assist for Jacob Ramos. What a show tonight, Olivia. For the game at 7 I don't have any words. Like I mentioned before, they got to finish strong. they got to finish strong. And what do they do? Score two goals in basically a minute and a half. Basically. And they're looking good, and, and this Bears team should be really confident going into this you know, framing that matchup, and it's going to be exciting to see. I mean, uh, we'll be here doing the, the game on Friday night, but we'll definitely have a little we'll fun somewhere uh, keeping you guys updated oh, yeah. with, the, with this match, this game. Uh, I don't know, they're, they're an exciting team to watch, and like you said, they can score goals at any time, and I think that's what makes it so dangerous. Yeah. It should be interesting on Friday. As you mentioned, women's soccer, we went back here at Swanson Field on Friday evening. A, a playoff game of their own. We'll be covering that here on the Bears Sports Network. Tonight it was all men's soccer off the time, and they cut the Owls at the knees. Your final score, Bears 6, Owls 0. Bears advance to the conference semifinals this Friday at Framingham State. Thanks for joining us for a men's soccer barn burner here on the Bears Sports Network. I'm Matt Donahue. And I'm Olivia Jennings. We'll see you on Friday after some women's soccer playoff action. No doubt. A heck of a watch. Until then, take care of yourselves, folks, and remember that every day is a great day to be a bear. And they stay there.